Now, Stephen is going to stand before this same Sanhedrin that not only put Jesus to death, but this same Sanhedrin that also is trying to cover up the resurrection. We know at the tomb of Jesus that after he had resurrected that they paid off the guards to say that the disciples stole his body and that that's a lie that is uh, even propagated in our day. We also know throughout the first few chapters of the book of Acts that they've done this one thing. They've been bringing up the resurrection and they're even threatening the disciples and saying, if you keep teaching this resurrection, it's going to get really bad for you. And at this point, they've even raised their hands in violence against them, trying to stop them from preaching the resurrection. Well, now here is a man named Stephen. And Stephen is one of these young converts to Christianity. Obviously, we're going to see here in a moment that Stephen has a great deal of knowledge when it comes to uh, the, the Jewish religious system and um, just the stories of the Old Testament. We're going to see this in his preaching in just a moment. But, but here's a young man who didn't necessarily, we have no record that he walked with Jesus or that he saw Jesus post-resurrection, probably an individual that was saved on the day of Pentecost. So Stephen is a man who's full of faith, the Bible says. Faith in the spoken message of Jesus. That by Jesus, you can be set free. And by Jesus, you can have forgiveness of sins. And that through Christ, you have the hope of eternal life. And so this Stephen now is going to stand before the Sanhedrin. Now consider, when the Sanhedrin is looking at someone like Peter and John, and they're trying to get them to be quiet about the message of Jesus, well, Peter and John can look back and say, look, we saw him alive. You can try to make us stop preaching and teaching if you want, but we saw him alive after the crucifixion. And so we can't stop telling people. But Stephen, however, this young Christian, who probably didn't see the resurrected Lord, but came by faith in salvation through the proclamation of the gospel, is now standing before the Sanhedrin. And what's Stephen going to do? Is Stephen going to stand or is Stephen going to back away and say, you know what, I want nothing to do with this Jesus? Well, the Bible tells us they look at Stephen and they see that his face is like the face of an angel. And the Bible says that the high priest, chapter 7, verse 1, asked this question. Is this true? Stephen, is this what you're saying? Well, between the rest of chapter number 7, verse number 2, all the way until we get to verse, really, number 53, Stephen is going to preach a message unlike any other message recorded in the book of Acts. And we're not going to walk through the entire message line by line, but I'm just going to highlight for you what Stephen does. Because Stephen is going to start right where they are with the knowledge they have of being Jewish people set aside, called out by God. And Stephen is going to lead them through the Old Testament in the hopes to point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what he does. He begins with the call of Abraham. And we know that that is the beginning of uh, the Jewish uh, faith, really. This is where, uh, where this nation begins, is the moment that God called Abram out. He says in verse 2, the God of glory appeared to Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he settled in Haran. And he said, get out of your country and away from your relatives and come to the land that I will show you. So he starts with Abraham and begins to walk him through that patriarchal period, ending with the 12 patriarchs in verse number 8. He mentions Jacob and the 12 patriarchs. Those, of course, become the 12 tribes of Israel. He moves from there to their time spent enslaved in Egypt. And he mentions that they had gone down into Egypt, verse 9 through 16, and that during that time, that those in Egypt uh, who went down, Joseph went down, he mentions Joseph, and then he mentions uh, the, the, uh, the, the patriarchs going down and how they became enslaved. And how Pharaoh begins to oppress them and oppress them relentlessly. And how this goes on way after even Joseph had died. And then he goes directly into the man named Moses. 
And he speaks about the, the amazing things that Moses did. He mentions in verse 22, the education that the Egyptians gave to Moses. Uh, he also speaks of Moses being on the run in the wilderness after he murdered an Egyptian man. And then he also brings up the, the call of Moses to come back into uh, Egypt in order to demand from the Pharaoh that he lets God's people go. So he's taking them through the Old Testament. After he gets there, then he begins uh, to talk about Israel's rebellion against God. Listen to verse 37. He says, This is Moses, who said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brothers. He is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness together with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our ancestors. He received living oracles to give to us and our ancestors were unwilling to obey him but pushed back, uh, but pushed him away and their hearts turned back to Egypt. And so then he begins to mention their idolatry and how even after Moses had led them on this great, amazing exodus out of Egypt, they fall captive to bowing down and worshiping idols. And then he gets into verse 44 and he says, our ancestors had the tabernacle of the testimony in the wilderness, just as he who spoke to Moses commanded him to make it according to the pattern he had seen. And our ancestors in turn received it. And with Joshua brought it in when they dispossessed the nations that God drove out before our fathers until the days of David. And David found favor in God's sight and asked that he might provide a proper dwelling place for God, the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built him a house. And so you see now how Stephen has brought them completely through the Old Testament narrative. All right, now I want you to listen to what Stephen says next because this is where everything is going to change. Stephen says, However, the Most High does not dwell in sanctuaries made with hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, Earth is my footstool. What sort of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is my resting place? Did not my hands make all these things? And then he says, you stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears. You are always resisting the Holy Spirit as our ancestors did. So do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They even killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law under the direction of angels and yet you have not kept it and they were enraged in their hearts at him. Now we're going to finish this story tomorrow, but let me sum up everything about today. What Stephen does is he takes them from Abraham all the way to Jesus and he shows them the guilt that they have incurred as Jewish people. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to bring them up to a point where he can point them to Jesus and show them that Jesus is the Messiah they've been looking for all along and that they can receive forgiveness of sins through him. Which, friends, if I could have one word for you this afternoon, it'd be this. Know your audience. Obviously, Stephen was able to bring them through the Old Testament and show them Jesus. Why? Because they had an Old Testament knowledge. But there are other people that you come in contact with that won't have that knowledge. You need to know your audience. You need to know if you're dealing with an atheist, where to start. If you're dealing with a Mormon, where to start. If you're dealing with a Muslim, where do I start? If I'm dealing with a Hindu or a Buddhist, where do I start biblically? How can I bring them to the table to show them of their deep need for Jesus? But it all starts with your biblical knowledge. As I said yesterday, get in the book. Know the book. Memorize scripture. And then allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in these gospel conversations. Not every gospel presentation is the same. Every person you run into is starting at a different place. You need to be able to identify it and then move forward utilizing the Holy Spirit working in you in order to present the gospel effectively and efficiently to them. So today, get in the book, know the word, and be able to walk people to Jesus from whatever stage of life or place in life they might be. May God bless you.